Hey guys, thanks again for tuning in for another episode of TFB TV. Today we're going to be talking about the Tabuk Sniper from Two River Arms in Oklahoma City. They helped us with filming this video and we really appreciate their help and generosity in this. And you also check out our two previous videos on the firearms company in Oklahoma City and give them a shout out if you want to there. Also, Ventura Munitions really helps us out with these sorts of episodes and they help us provide the ammunition and some of the funding and some of the stuff that we need, desperately need like the cameras and various tools and that sort of equipment to help keep these videos going. Anyways, before we get started, just a quick note on the Tabuk Sniper. You've seen some of these companies to book snipers before in your life. Most likely, if you've ever seen the movie American Sniper, there's a scene where Bradley Cooper is going through and he finds a weapons cache underneath a floor. And some of Two Rivers Arms, uh, small arms, specifically their sniper versions, are in that weapons cache that the production company bought from them and put them in there. The Tabuk Sniper was produced by state-run factories in Saddam's Iraq with set-up help from Zastava Arms in Yugoslavia. Production actually began late in the 1980s due to the need for an intermediate-range sniper rifle by troops fighting Iran. It served in the Iraqi army throughout that conflict, then sued in total defeat in Desert Storm in 1991, and was still in service when the United States invaded Iraq in 2003. With the three vents in the handguard, the skeletonized stock, the use of standard Kalashnikov magazines, and the plastic pistol grip, the Tabuk sniper can be very distinctive in its appearance. The rifle weighed 10 pounds, had a 23-inch barrel, was chambered in 7.62 by 3.9, and lacked the various grenade launcher attachments that the standard Tabuk rifles were equipped with, such as the locking mechanism for the receiver cover, the grenade launcher, rear sight that also shut off the gas system. This was because there was no need to launch rifle grenades from the sniper rifle. The rear sights are the same as an RPK, with fine adjustments for windage and increments in English numerals. In addition, it used an RPK-style trunnion in a stamped receiver to improve accuracy. The book snipers also came with 10 or 15 round magazines. This allowed shooters to get into a lower prone position because of the decreased height of the rifle. But the rifle could also easily take 30 round magazines as well, and we often see them with these 30 round magazines inserted today. The design was based on the Zastava Arms M76 rifle chambered in 8mm Mauser, but the Iraqi design was instead chambered in 7.62 by 3.9. Ironically, a number of these original Yugoslavian rifles were imported into Iraq in 2005 to arm Iraqi security forces. The Tabuk sniper also sported a skeletonized stock. This stock had a section cut out that could mount a leather cheek piece that a shooter could strap on or take off entirely. At the end of the muzzle was a PKM style muzzle brake, giving the rifle a very distinctive look. Many of these rifles came issued with 4x24 power PSO scopes mounted on sections bolted into the receiver on the left side of the rifle. These PSO scopes were extremely advanced technology in the 1960s when they first came out, but by the 1980s when Saddam would have put them into use, they were outdated. Nevertheless, they featured numbered windage stadia lines and came with a ranging pattern that allowed a shooter to range the average height of a military-aged male out to 1,000 meters, considering that height would be 1.7 meters in length. Later, versions had limited light-gathering capabilities for use at night. Apart from the PSO scope, there is also a Yugoslavian company called Zarak, which Saddam bought a number of to mount on the Tabuk sniper. Because the Tabuk was only in 7.62 by 3.9, it couldn't reach out to long ranges. It had a max effective range at 600 meters or so. The rifle was probably used mostly between 400 and 500 meters in combat, although the Two Rivers guys were able to hit targets out to 1,000 meters on a calm range in the United States. Saddam did have a long-range solution, the al Qadisiya, which is essentially the Iraqi version of a Dragunov, iconic with palm trees imprinted in the magazine. This precision rifle is even more rare than the Tabuk sniper in surviving examples. During its heyday, the Tabuk sniper probably wasn't very effective in the desert trenches of the Iran-Iraq war due to the war being fought over huge pieces of ground and consisting of mainly tanks and artillery. There was some urban combat during the war, but probably not enough for a squad-level DM rifle to really shine. Instead, one of the operating requirements for the rifle was that it be able to support the Al-Quds RPK at the squad level. Whether or not the Tabuk sniper was really issued at the squad level in every infantry unit, we don't know. We also don't know if the rifles were issued with match-grade ammunition, or if Saddam's armies even had match-grade ammunition in their inventory. One point I do want to point out is that the rifle would have sounded like a standard Kalashnikov to any unit being fired at by it. 
thus making it appear that the enemy didn't have a long-range capability. Today, leftover Tobuk snipers are really only in use among various Iraqi militia units, private collections throughout the MENA region, and of course by insurgents all over the region itself. You also see them for every once in a while for sale listed on the Iraqi black market. During the rearming of Iraq, Tobuk rifles were lost in disorganization of Saddam's forces and were largely replaced by imported arms during Operation Iraqi Freedom. Many of these included Romanian PSLs, actual Russian Dragonovs, and more recently, Remington 700s and Russian T-5000s. Thanks guys, I hope you learned a little bit about the Tobuk Sniper and we'll see you next time.